Hello, this is Jared Hillam, and I've got on with me Alan Beam. He runs our data visualization team. And one of the things that we're going to show you is the uh, ability to build a cross tab that has frozen uh, rows and columns. And you'll see that on the very right hand side of the screen here inside of our Intricity Visualization Store. This particular visualization is um, $950. And, uh, and we'll walk you through it here uh, today. So, so Alan, if you can kind of demo through some of the capabilities uh, and how it's maybe different from what uh, is natively available inside of, uh, of Looker. Yeah, sure. So the table visualization that comes with Looker doesn't allow you to freeze the dimensions on the left-hand side. You'll see if we scroll down, the headers are frozen, but if we scroll to the right, you lose the context as you're looking at your values. So the, the primary value in this custom visualization is that it allows you to scroll to the right and maintain that context. So you can see all your values, you can scroll down, the headers will still be frozen as well. So you, you get that out of the box with this visualization. You also get the option to group the dimensions. So if I want to uh, collapse my groups here, that gives me a little bit more um, value in how I, the different ways that I can view my data. And that's giving a total, right? Yes, yes. So the, the values in the, this top row here are gonna be the sum of the values within that group. And so when I collapse, I see the sum of everything within that grouping. Cool. Now, can you sort those like if uh, on the internal number? Yeah, so if I, if I want to sort by a particular column, it's going to maintain my grouping and then sort the values within that grouping. So if I sort descending, I get the highest value on top, but my, my frozen columns are actually going to stay how they are. So it allows me to, to keep the grouping as I, as I want it with, and still sort the values within that. Nice, okay. Um, what about in a scenario where um, you don't want necessarily everything totaled? Can we do that? Can we turn off the total so that it just shows the, the detail? Yeah, we give a, a few uh, configuration options. So you can turn off grouping if you want. Uh, you can maintain grouping but turn off the subtotals. And so then you won't get those values. And um, you can turn off, on or off row totals and column totals. So the row totals, if you scroll all the way to the right, with row totals on, you'll get a new column with the sum of all the values in that row. And if you turn on column totals, it'll give you a new row at the bottom with the sum of all the cells in that column. Cool. Now, what about the coloring? Can I can I modify the coloring at all? Like if I don't, don't want it to, if I want it to look in a different way? Sure, so we do allow you to, to specify a color scheme or if you know the exact color code you want, and um, you can enter that if you come over to custom. Uh, but essentially, if you pick a color scheme, it'll change. It'll take the first color in that color scheme and make the header that color. Nice. Okay. And then I have seen a couple scenarios where, like, notice your male and female are really large, but the data inside is not. Is there a way that we can kind of narrow in those those columns so that they're not so wide? Yeah. So for each measure that we use in a in this chart. We give a handful of options. You can specify how many decimal places you want to display. Uh, so I can change that. You can specify the width. So that kind of answers that question. And uh, if you come in and, and specify a particular width, you can change how wide each cell is for that measure. Uh, you can also add a prefix or a suffix if you want a dollar sign on the beginning or a percent sign on the end. You can include those. Now, another thing that I remember. Um, you know, sometimes you get when when you, when you get these grids, they're so large that you you kind of get lost in the numbers, and so a lot of people want to kind of highlight, um, you know, mins and maxes, and you know things that they should be warned about and whatnot. Is there any way to sort of do that? Because it, I, I see on the options, it doesn't necessarily show it there. Um, is there any? How how would I do that? Yeah, so Looker allows you to create custom HTML for your measures. And so you can use that functionality if we can. We actually have a measure in here, total order profit, where we've put some custom HTML for the values in that measure. And whatever you use 
in, for that measure is going to get brought over into the visualization. So okay. here we specified any, any positive value is green, any negative value is red, and then zero doesn't have a color. Nice. Okay. Now, um, another thing I wanted to, um, uh, to understand is uh, I noticed you have the pivoting down there at the bottom. You can see sort of all the pivots between uh, how Looker pivots the data. Is that, does that just a mirror? Is it mirror the pivot? Like how, do, how would I unpivot this data or, or pivot it? Yeah, so you, the cross-site visualization does require at least one pivot dimension, and, but it makes use of the standard Looker functionality as much as possible. So however you want the cross-tab visualization to display the, the fields, your column headers, and your, your rows, that's how you put it in your, uh, in your data tab. So we, we've, here we've put two different pivot fields, age, here and gender, and so those will show across the top of the cross-tab visualization as well. The, the difference is that we're going to group it uh, in the opposite order as Looker does. And, but, but that's just a matter of, of specifying what order you put your pivots in. So uh, just so I can see it working, would you be able to just take the order status and just pivot that on the, sure. right there on the, right inside there, yeah. Yeah, and then we hit run, and we'll see, I'll close the data tab, give us a little more room to look at it in the visualization. So now we see one frozen column here for days as customer tiered, and we get a third pivot header for the status. Cool. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, that covers a lot of the requirements I was thinking of. Is there, is there anything else you think would be important to show? Uh, the only other thing is just the examples we've been using, we've only had one measure. There, there isn't really a limit to how many measures you can use. So if I come in and put a second or even a third measure in here, once I put multiple measures, it'll still display those measures and correctly, and it'll add a, head, a label for each one of those measures. So once this loads, you'll see w within each order status, we're gonna get multiple columns, one for each nice. measure. Cool, thanks so much, Alan. So that is the cross tab with the ability to freeze columns and rows. And in addition to the visualization itself, often organizations look to us to help them uh, deploy the visualization into their Looker environment. And we can certainly do that for you. If you just go here in the, uh, in the store where you see this little black box, you click on that and that'll, that um, if you add that to your cart, and, and include it to your purchase. It will uh, it'll give you four hours of our support time uh, to help you get your visualization up and running. And of course, every visualization comes with instructions. So if you wanna try uh, and do it yourself, you certainly can. Thanks so much and we'll catch you all later.